All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have designed this course in a way that as soon as you are done going through all this limit video that I'm coming to do, you don't need to watch any other video before you go to take your quiz, your midterm, or your final exam. So stay here with me. Let's start. So when we talk about limit, limit actually is the you know the the basis of calculus. So without limit, there's no calculus. So we need to understand this better before we can even talk about the derivative and what integration. So limit basically is like when I'm finding limit, let's say as x is approaching a of f of x, what am I going to get? So let's assume, let's define this one to be equal to f. So basically this is the definition that we are going to use for limit. So now let's talk about properties of limit or rules or let me say the laws. Right. So first, I'm going to assume that f and j are functions, two functions, such that when I pick limit as x is approaching a of f of x, I'm getting m, and then x is approaching a of j of x, I'm getting l, and my c here is constant. Then what are the sum of the properties that we need to learn from here? Then the first one is we need to talk about a limit of a constant. So what is a limit of a constant? Now, limit of a constant, let's assume that I want to find limit as x is approaching a of a constant c, as we are talking about it here. Then this is equal to the c. The idea is that no matter the value of x that is going to approach, like let's assume that x is approaching a, s is approaching b. Since my constant here does not depend on x, then the value here does not change, right? So basically, that is what we are trying to say here. So in graph form, let's assume that I have my A here and then I have my C somewhere here. Or let me see if I'm talking about limit, um, something like C here. Then no matter the value of A, if I change A to B, still I get to C, still I get to this. If I change it to C, I still have it this form. So a limit of a constant is the constant have it in mind let's talk about constant multiple rule now constant multiple rule goes like this if i want to take limit as x is approaching a and then i have a constant multiplied by a function then with this constant multiple rule we know now that when i find limit of a constant it's just a constant so it means that it does not depend on this x here so it means that this one can be written as i just need to bring the constant out because it does not affect it so we are going to have c times limit x is approaching a of f of x so basically this is what you are going to get right so since limit of a constant is the constant then i can just bring it out and then we know that this is equal to m as we defined so this will be equal to c times M. We will take example very quick um, in the same video. Now let's talk about the power rule. I love power rule a lot. So power rule is like I have limit x is approaching a of let's say f of x, but this is to the power n. Then what can we do here? The magic will happen. So this will be the same as limit x is approaching a of f of x or to the power n. So you see how it is. So this is kind of like sending the limit under the parenthesis, working with the function, then you put the this one in. Now this is equal to m as we defined from the function. So this is going to be m to the power n. That's what you are going to get from here. Good. Now let's look at the root rule. The root rule is like basically working with like the power rule. So root rule is like I have limit x is approaching a and then let's say the nth root of let's say f of x. Same thing here. The limit can go under the root and perform the function. Now we know that this from the definition it's m. So we are going to get the nth root of m. So that's basically what we are going to get from here. Now here our n um it's not zero 
it's not negative two i think so or it can be negative if you do yeah something like that so these are the first four properties that we need to learn from here limit of a constant is the constant we need to remember the constant rule the power rule and then the root rule let's look at the sum and then difference rule these are basically the same so for example if i want to pick limit as s is approaching a of f of x plus j of x then this is equal to limit x is approaching a of f of x plus limit s is approaching a of j of x from the definition this is equal to m and this is equal to l so this is what you are going to get and then the difference also follows it's just now we change the sign to negative so this is minus so the same thing limit x is approaching a of j of x minus limit x is approaching a of f of x and this is going to give us l minus m that is it let's look at the product rule so with the product rule we want to now look at me taking a limit of a function but this function is multiplying each other so how can i do this this is very simple it's the same thing pick limit of the first function that is f of x and then dot it with limit as x is approaching a of j of x very simple right and this is going to give us m times l as we've defined it to be that good so that is the dot function now the last rule that i'm going to talk about which i love it a lot because it goes with rule right is now we want to find limit of um, a rational function i mean this is the quotient rule so i mean this is what we are trying to say this is a rational function i have a function which is dividing and one thing about mass is anytime we have a fraction it's kind of we are scared because anytime the denominator is zero something happens either the world is going to blow up or you know, we don't know what is going to happen so this can be written as limit as x is approaching a of f of x divided by limit as x is approaching a of j of x now when the top is zero we don't have problem but the only problem is when the down is zero we know that this is equal to m and this is equal to l provided so this comes with condition provided provided l is not zero so this limit is going to exist provided l is not equal to zero so these are the eight properties that we need to learn so far as limit of a function is in place so this is what is going to guide us to you know go through our limit questions right so let's take some question let's practice now i'll give you some to also practice as well so now let's assume that limit as x is approaching a as x is approaching one of f of x is equal to eight and then for j of x is equal to three and then eight of x is equal to two so we want to see if this limit works out so first we want to look at limits x is approaching one of five so now we see that this is a constant it does not depend on the value of x so no matter how x is going to change we are still going to have the constant very simple very very simple try and understand the properties now let's look at this one too this one we want to look at limit x is approaching one five times j of x so this is the constant multiple rule so i can factor the five out and then now pick limit as x is approaching one of j of x and then from the preamble this is equal to three right limit as x is approaching one of j of s is equal to three so this is going to give us five times three and this is 15. so it's kind of very simple to deal with them and let's go through this one too limit x is approaching one f of x times h of x this is the same as 
limit x is approaching 1 f of x times limit x is approaching 1 and then h of x do you see that and then from the question this is equal to 8 and then for the h of x is equal to 2 so you are going to have um, 8 times 2 and this is going to give us 16 oh this is nice this is nice let's look at this okay so limit we want to look at limit x is approaching 1 of f of x squared so we said this can be written as limit x is approaching 1 f of x all squared and this is this guy here is 8 so we are going to now have 8 squared which is equal to 64 hmm nice let's do with this one too now limit x is approaching 1 f of x times gen of x divided by h of x so this is the same as limit picking the limit of the top function divided by picking the limit of the down function but the top function can be expanded again because the top function is a product rule we need to use the product rule for the top so you are going to have limit x approaching 1 of f of s times limit x approaching 1 of g of x divided by limit s approaching 1 of h of x so now let's go and look for the component this is 8 this is 3 this is 2 so 8 3 2 so we are going to have 8 times 3 divided by 2 is that right yeah so what is um 8 times 3 i think it should be 24 divided by 2 and this is going to give us a big 12. so that is the quotient rule right there let's look at f f is the root rule right so this is limit x is approaching one cubic root of gen of x h of x minus 8 this is the same as the cubic root now there we have the limit and that's so we are going to have limit x approaching 1 of f of x h of x minus 8 right so let's use the product rule in there this is limit x is approaching 1 of f of x dot limit x is approaching 1 of h of x minus 8 now what is the function inside there this is cubic root this is 8 this is 2 i think so yeah 8 and 2 so we are going to have 8 times 2 minus 8 and then guess what happens here yeah. this is the same as cubic root of 16 minus 8 then cubic root of 8 and cubic root of 8 is i think 2. good now let's look at the last question and then we are done i'll give you a trial question and then we are done here so limit x is approaching 1 i will expand i'll have f of x plus a limit x is approaching 1 of g of x minus limit x is approaching 1 of h of x so this is going to give us this is 8 this is 3 and this is 2 so i'm going to have 8 plus 3 minus 2 and this is going to give us a big 9 from here so 8 3 and 2 so basically this is the idea of using the properties of limit so for example if a question is given and a question is saying that use the properties this is how you need to go through the procedure right good to do it so i'll end the video here now i want the videos to be short again so i've break down the things like into smaller parts so that we can have small time section right 
So now try this and leave your final results in the comment section. So we have this one here, we have this one, and then we have also this one too. So you to do the following question here. So I want to scroll it so that you can have view of everything that we are looking for here. All right. So see you in the next video.